One of the things we talk to students about is, is countering what the left does over and over again, certainly on campus, but even in society. If they disagree with you, uh, they call you a series of names. You're, you're racist, you're sexist, you're transphobic, whatever it is. It, sometimes it doesn't even matter if that's the topic you're talking about. <laughs> that's their way of intimidating people out of real debate, real discussion. Our counter, for those of us center right, I can't be coming up with their own series of names, but I, I think rather pushing this larger narrative that really is about unity, saying, hey, I don't care uh, whether you're black or white, young or old, rich or poor. I don't care whether you were born here or you legally came here from somewhere else. I don't care about your orientation or anything else. What I care about is that you should have the same freedoms and the same opportunities as, as I inherited and others have inherited from our parents and grandparents. That's the American dream. That's a bigger issue than just conservative or liberal out there. And it's a one that truly does bring people together. Are you guys worried at all that just the entropy of all this will always drag things left? I mean, even right now, if you think about it, you know, there's a big movement for school choice happening on the right. So more and more parents will select out of the main systems. Personally, I obviously think that's a good thing and they'll either homeschool or charter school or pods or whatever it might be. But at the college level, that they're either just not gonna go to college or they will just figure out other ways to go into the workforce, thus leaving the colleges in essence to the socialists. Yeah, I think you're in both counts. I mean, I, I've said the reaction, if you're a parent being upset about what we've seen, either taught or not taught in our schools over the last few years, particularly during the pandemic, is one of three things. Get involved, run for school board, take your school board over, do something that takes your traditional government-run school and puts it on the right track. Uh, go to a private school if you're in a state like Wisconsin where I expanded school choice, parental school choice options statewide. Send your kid to a private school with a voucher or tax credit or other things like that. Or if you've got the capacity and the ability to homeschool. But you're right in those last two options, and certainly when it comes to colleges and universities, that de facto then leaves a whole mass of people in the government-run institutions that don't have um, that don't have a counter to all that. Which is precisely why what we're doing at Young America's Foundation is so important. YAF.org, if people are interested, and that is people sometimes say, oh, "Do you have a do you have a, 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 a YAF chapter at Hillsdale?" We do. But I'm like, I'm not worried about Hillsdale. I'm <laughs> I worried about the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I'm worried about, exactly, I'm worried about Stanford. I'm worried about Harvard. I'm worried about Yale. You know, I'm worried about so many public government-run institutions. And so that's why our work is certainly not done even as people send their kids uh, to alternatives to the government-run institutions. We've got to fight every single day and every single one of these campuses to get the truth out. And remember, the irony is, you know, free speech is something that's protected by our Constitution, but it should be revered of all places on our college campuses. Yet traditionally, that's where we're at the most at risk. And so we're going to fight there. We're going to fight on campus. And when we get there, one of the best things is we just had Shapiro, Ben Shapiro up the other day at one of our campuses. He typically gets not only thousands of kids on campus, even on these liberal campuses, but then we live stream and we put that stuff up on our YouTube page, Yaf TV, and we literally have millions of people tune into those things. And so that's how we get around this other nonsense is finding social media ways to get around. You know, it's the, the beauty of not having to go through a limited number of news sources. We can put something up on Yaf TV and other social media sites and really have an impact. That's where we get right to those students, not only in college, high school, middle school, and younger. What would you say to the high school kid or I guess to the parents of the high school kid that, that care about these ideas, uh, but they're not ready to not let the kid go to college or just send them out into the real world. They wanna send them to one of these schools, but then they're just simply looking at the numbers and they're going, man, it's now 60 grand a year to go to, I don't know, Syracuse <laughs> and it's 20 grand a year to go to a state school. Like this just does not work. W what do you say to those people? Well, I think, one, increasingly, uh, there are better alternatives than sending a, a young person to a four-year undergraduate. Certainly, if you want to be an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, those are certain professions where you have to. But I think twice, there's a lot of, and, and I wish I wasn't having to say that, but I, I think between the cost, the rising cost, which is only going to get worse, the, the so-called student debt reduction is only going to open the door towards more of these colleges and universities upping their tuition by 10 grand or more, so it gets offset in that regard. Uh, but I also think just the radical indoctrination. If you're going to go, though, if your kid, your son or daughter, grandson or granddaughter, or you as a student are going to go, one of the most important things, whether it's YAF, College Republicans, some other conservative group, is surround yourself 
uh, with as many like-minded people. Because you're going to get exposed to different ideas over and over again. But you want to have a support network out there. The number one thing we hear at our conferences are students say, oh, it's so nice to be around kids that think the same way we do. And I know with both of my sons, who are 28 and 27 now, one who went to a private uh, Jesuit institution, which sadly was woke as well. The other went to the University of Wisconsin-Madison, which is left to Berkeley. Uh, both of them came out conservatives because of the people they surrounded themselves with, who to this day are still are allies of theirs. I think that's incredibly important. Yeah, what, what do you say to the kids once they get through it, when then they look at the economy and they go, man, these jobs that were being offered, we basically, we can't live in big cities because rent is high and, and uh, we do want to get out of our parents' basement, but it seems like everybody's going back in there. Well, again, that's part of the reason why I say reluctantly, but sadly, that, that if you don't have to be in a, a profession where it requires a four-year undergraduate degree, I'd say find some other alternatives. A lot of folks, community colleges, apprenticeships, other means to get into decent paying jobs with all that student loan debt. On top of it, it's a good reminder, again, why socialism, communism, Marxism might sound good to some on the surface, but it just doesn't work. Not only in past history, it doesn't work in Venezuela or Cuba today. It's certainly a problem in Hong Kong. We've seen it not that long ago in the Soviet Union, but even in big cities. Uh, you see so many big cities with the problems, not only with high prices and out of control rent or housing costs, you see it with cost of living problems, you see it with crime in a lot of our large cities. Those are all places where you not just have Democrat or liberal control, you largely have radicals in charge of, of, these, uh, of these governments. And I think that's got to be the constant pushback, the, the wake-up call. If you're concerned about all these things, stop voting for people who embrace these ideas because you're going to get more of it. What do you think we do about the tension between, I think, what's growing between the urban and suburban communities? You know, Lee Zeldin obviously did an incredible job in New York, way better than anyone thought, but he did lose. And I looked at the map, you know, everybody was showing the map of New York. And if you look at the map of New York, it's red. It's almost all red. Then there's the New York City metro area and a little bit sort of towards Buffalo. That's pretty much it. Uh, but yet they all have to vote for one governor. And I think that tension is, is almost intractable. And it's not, New York's not the only place with that, obviously. No, you see it in variations. Uh, you see it even in, in the New York metro area, the citywide. You look at the difference, the last three gubernatorial elections. I was just looking at an interesting map today about that, uh, where Manhattan, the island there, has gotten deeper and deeper blue. Uh, you see Staten Island's gotten more and more red. And yep. then you see pockets based, interestingly enough, based on on ethnic trends. Uh, you see a lot of folks fleeing Russia that have come into southern uh, Brooklyn that actually have made it a little bit more open to Republicans. You see in the northeast uh, part of, of Queens where you see, according to this map, it was some of the increases in Asian population, and that's made it a little bit more open. So you see these divisions out there, uh, not only just political, but, but by groups of people coming into the country or coming into a given region. We see it though nationwide. In my state in Wisconsin, part of the reason why the governor's race was not within reach, other than the fact that the Democrat incumbent spent about twice as much money as the Republican, but was Madison, where the state capital is at and where the university is at, got much higher percentages, not only of total votes, but a much higher margin for Democrats. Uh, the suburbs were still Republican, but not as much as they had been in the past, and the outstate was a little bit more open. Uh, to Republicans, but you see this split between urban areas becoming increasingly liberal, um, not even just suburban, but more rural to mid-sized uh, communities becoming strong, steady uh, strongholds, I should say, for Republicans. There's just a real division in America. We gotta get past that. Uh, I would hope one of the things we talk to students about is, is countering what the left does over and over again, certainly on campus, but even in society. If they disagree with you, um, they call you a series of names. You're, you're racist, you're sexist, you're transphobic, whatever it is. It, sometimes it doesn't even matter if that's the topic you're talking about. <laughs> that's their way of intimidating people out of real debate, real discussion. Our counter, for those of us center-right, uh, can't be coming up with their own series of names, but I, I think rather pushing this larger narrative that really is about unity, saying, hey, I don't care uh, whether you're black or white, young or old, rich or poor. I don't care whether you were born here or you legally came here from somewhere else. I don't care about your orientation or anything else. What I care about is that you should have the same freedoms 
and the same opportunities as, as I inherited and others have inherited from our parents and grandparents. That's the American dream. That's a bigger issue than just conservative or liberal out there. And it's a one that truly does bring people together because then we can start to see, yeah, you know, the why is what matters, not the what. The, the what will cause us to have uh, political and other differences. But if we believe in the why, the, the idea that, that all of us were created equal, that, that the government didn't give us these rights, that God gave us these rights, and it's the role of the, of the government fundamentally to protect those rights, not the least of which are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If that we agree on, then we can debate the specifics of the what. But right now, sadly, in most places in this country, people don't even agree on what they think the why is, and that's a big problem. If you're looking for more honest and thoughtful conversations about politics instead of nonstop yelling, check out our politics playlist. And if you want to watch full interviews on a variety of topics, watch our full episode playlist all right over here. And to get notified of all future videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell.